Hey everybody, this is Ari from the Literary Gladiators, and today I'm going to delve back into the world of Doctor Who, and I'm going to review a book that I had just purchased on a whim, because at work I sometimes get bored and I like reading books when I'm at work, and I decided to buy a book, a Doctor Who book, at Barnes & Noble, and I thought I'd share a review of it for you guys. So this book is called Fear of the Dark by Trevor Baxendale. It's part of the 50th anniversary Doctor Who collection. It is a very interesting book. This, The Doctor that is stars in this book is the fifth Doctor, portrayed by Peter Davison in the series. He played the Doctor between 1982 and 1984. He's also accompanied in this book by two of his companions, Nyssa and Tegan. Um, both of them, one, Nyssa is a scientist from another planet called Trocken, and Tegan is an air stewardess in training who's very sassy and um, loudmouth and stuff like that. There are interesting characters in this story as well, and I'll get to those in a minute. Fear of the Dark is an interesting book. Peter Davison's doctor was very human. He was very kind, and a lot of times the writers of the show would put him in situations that would make him feel extremely uncomfortable. For instance, Peter Davison's doctor had a companion named Adric, and they killed him off because it made him vulnerable. And then the fifth doctor was very, very vulnerable. But in this story, it pushes him so far to the limit. What The story is basically, there is a planet called Akashemon, or, or something along the lines of that, and um, there is a team of scientists, not really scientists, but people down there that are trying to extract a certain kind of mineral from the planet, and they're not really supposed to be doing it. So there's a character named uh, Jen Stoker, or Jill Stoker, excuse me, who is a, um, she's a very tough uh, commander kind of person, she's and there's Bunny, who is, uh, who is a really, really big, tough guy, but he actually has an artificial arm, and he's basically kind of like the gentle giant of the story. And there's some other minor characters. And eventually what happens is that this, mon this not only a monster, but this, this, this entity called the Dark is released throughout the entire planet, and they have, they have to send a distress signal. And it turns out that the people who send a distress signal were actually trying to stop the dark. Uh, there's a guy called Cadwell on that ship who is trying to stop the dark from coming out, but we don't find that out till later. And then the captain of the ship, Captain Lawrence, is actually a former love interest of uh, Jill Stoker. So it's a very interesting dynamic. Also some other minor characters strewn throughout the story, but none of them really have a huge impact. They're all important, but I don't really need to name all of them at this time. So it's a very interesting story, and I think what really makes it interesting is that Peter Davis' doctor is thrown on the edge. He has so much shadow and so much darkness and so much emotion, and, and it's such a terrible situation for him or anyone to be in. And characters start dying one by one, and eventually there's a final confrontation between the doctor and the dark, which is the monster in this story. Like I said, it's not only really a monster, it's a... Um, some sort of uh, sentient uh, being that can like uh, destroy people and stuff and and eventually one of the craziest things about the story just like some other Doctor Who stories everyone except the Doctor and the two main companions wind up dying so the only characters alive at the end of the book are the Doctor, Nyssa and Tegan and it's a very very dark story but it's written so well and it, it, it's, it, it just jumps out of you this is the kind of story where if you're not a Doctor Who fan, you will still love this story because there's no, the TARDIS really isn't in the story. Um, it's in it a little bit at the beginning, a little bit at the end, but it, it's not required. You don't need to know about the TARDIS in order to understand the story. This story could be read by anyone. And that is the brilliance of Doctor Who, that there are some stories that can be read by anyone. So Fear of the Dark, let me review it in a more statistical way. It's an excellent story. I think if it was a TV story, if they had, if they were able to make it a good TV story, it would be up there with stories, famous stories such as Earthshock and the Caves of Androzani. For those of you who know about Caves of Androzani, um, it is a story where the, it's the doc, Peter Davison's last story, and basically 
everything in the story goes wrong for him. He gets poisoned, and he he his companion gets poisoned, and people keep mistaking him as a gun runner or as a um, person who is a bad guy or whatever. And eventually, all he cares about is saving his companion, and that's it. And he does save his companion, but at the cost of his own life because he doesn't have enough antidote to heal both of them. So he dies and regenerates into the next form. But it, this story is very similar to that, except it all the characters are still working together and they're still have this plight in front of them, this 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 problem, this 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 thing in front of them that is blocking them and it's making it difficult. And characters are dying, and the doctor trying to find a solution. There is a brilliant scene in this book where the doctor is influenced by the dark. Apparently the dark can get into non-human minds, um, brains. Uh, the Doctor and Nyssa are both not human, so the, it plays around with their minds, makes them think things that they wouldn't usually think. And there was one scene where the Doctor actually said, killing himself and ridding him of the dark and ridding the dark out of his system would be a better option than any other option. He was so scared and so unsure of what to do that he actually thought that killing himself would be the best option, and the Doctor is never like that, especially Peter Davison's Doctor. He, that is the least likely thing you'd ever say. He was scared, frightened. You could feel it like coming off the pages. And it's a very interesting scene, and it's very well written by Trevor Baxendale. In conclusion, Doctor Who, Fear of the Dark, is... And it's, it's, it's an amazing story. There's no other word to describe. It's amazing. It's, it's unexplainable how amazing the story is. Like I said, if you are not a Doctor Who fan, I would still recommend reading this book. The only thing I would recommend is if you watch maybe a few episodes with Davison's Doctor in it, just so you get an idea of what the characters are like. Um, but you can still read this book without any prior knowledge of the show. There isn't... It's like any other science fiction show, this particular story. Very accessible by Baxendale. It was made very accessible. And it was just... It is literally the best Doctor Who book I have ever read, period. And as a book by itself, it is one of the best books that I have ever read, period. And I'm not just talking about Doctor Who books or science fiction books. This is any book. You could put the this alongside, maybe not some of the older literatures, but more like the new literatures that have come out you could compare it fear of the dark is is clearly one of my favorite you know you could probably put fear of the dark up there with someone like stephen king it, it, it's that kind of horror in it that really makes this story great and scary and unpredictable I, every time I turned a page, I had no idea if someone was going to die. I had no idea if there was going to be a, a, a stump scare of some sort. So it was always gripping to see what the next page would hold. I would give Fear of the Dark, if I had to give a score out of 5, I'd probably give it a 6. That is how good this book is. I would seriously suggest you read it. And even if you aren't a Doctor Who fan, I would seriously suggest reading it. it it is a wonderful thing and trevor baxendale you have done an excellent job i don't know if you're ever going to listen to this video but you've done an excellent job with this book and you've done great jobs with all your other books and i just wanted to give you kudos to this one because this one was just amazing so that is my review of fear of the dark by trevor baxendale um if you want to find this book uh you can find it um you can get it on kindle i know it's available because the whole 50th uh anniversary collection is available on kindle um, you can also get it at Barnes & Noble, find it in the science fiction section with uh, other Doctor Who uh, biographies and other books that you can find there. Um, it, it'll be like, a, a, it'll have like a white cover. I'll, I'll put a picture on the video so you can see it. Um, so, uh, this book was great. And I suggest, even if you have never, ever, ever, ever watched Doctor Who before, or even is not that interested in the science fiction genre, I would I'd read this because it's not just science fiction, it's also horror. And it's also uh, it's like it's like those jump scares, and it, it's got influence to it too. And it's an excellent book, and I would strongly suggest reading it. Um, all right, so for now, um, I'm Ari Schneider Gans, and I am signing off for Literary Gladiators. Um, I hope you enjoyed my review of Fear of the Dark, and I hope that you'll read it because it really is truly a deep dark 
and amazing book. So, remember, keep reading.